But anyways, thanks for coming. This is the second time I've done this, and I'm doing this next week, or not next week, in, in two weeks or so in Malaysia at your post. Um, but what I'm going to talk more about today is the mastery learning component of it, kind of the philosophy of my class, and I'll, I'll get a little bit into the production of like the videos and dis distribution and things like that, but more so big picture, like what do I do in chemistry this year? Um, so we'll be talking about my class and mastery in general. Uh, how do you keep track of student progress? How do you set up a grade book to do this? Because it's moving completely from assignment based to objectives now. So I don't grade homework anymore. I don't grade, um, you know, worksheets. So if you hate grading, this is for you. Um, how do we, how do we check student understand? I know I'm surprised not everyone is here. Uh, how do we check student learning? So reliably, how do we reliably assess what they're doing if we're not doing paper grading anymore? Um, some things you can do to adapt your class, so not diving in all the way, but taking bits and pieces from it, and then just some closing thoughts on top of that. Um, let's see. So, yes, chemistry. What I do is I have minimal formal teaching in my class, and what that means is that I do not stand up front and teach in my general chemistry anymore. Um, I still teach in AP chemistry just because of the nature of that class, but for general, when they come in, um, they just get to work on where they left off the day before, pretty much, and they don't, I don't really tell them what they have to do. I mean, I give them certain goals to reach every week, but I don't come in and say, today we're doing this, this, and this, because that's not what everybody's doing. Um, everything I do is from uh, a web-based platform, so everything I put out for instruction is from my website, and um, I, I did invest a little bit of money, and I bought my own domain name, so now if you go to bennettchemistry.com, boom, it's there, everything. And it's run through a Google site. Um, everything is based on student collaboration, because I'm not teaching formally. Uh, I mean, when you walk into this room, it, we're not all standing and facing the front like a traditional classroom. When you come in, we are working in groups. Um, everything is based on collaboration and learning. Uh, and, and part of my job, instead of looking at teaching 27 students chemistry, I teach small pockets of groups, different sections of where they are. Um, and then, again, teacher is facilitator, so I'm not dictating information. I'm not telling them chemistry like, we, like Dr. Beeson talked about this morning. They're discovering it, really. And they're working at their own pace. And in a traditional model, that's very difficult to do. Differentiation is one of the hardest things to do. So how do we differentiate these speeds? Well, I do everything via podcasting, right? So what I do is I'll put together a PowerPoint. I use the screen recording software and an and a input tablet. Um, oh, I should have gotten mine out. Um, but anyways, I teach to my computer, which is really strange at first, and I hate hearing myself still. I, I don't like listening to my own videos. But really, I go through a PowerPoint like I would in class. So I, I have a PowerPoint up, and I'm talking, and I'm annotating right on the screen, and I've got a clip of, of a video that I put out last week um, that shows kind of how that works. The great thing about this is there's flexibility. So more, you know, more than, I would say, a quarter of our students come from Weijungu, Incheon, you know, uh, Suwon, you know, like half an hour trips, 40 minute trips every day, both directions. Um, and so what these podcasts allow them to do is instead of coming to class and listening to me lecture and then struggling with homework every night, they can come to class, work on the homework, do practice problems with me in the room and I can direct them, and then they can go and watch the lecture on the bus with their headphones, or they can listen to the lecture on the train. So they're missing zero class time. All of the class time that they do have is direct, um, very pointed and intentional learning. Uh, and this is great for athletes. So Far East, like those kids miss zero class. And they ha all of their expectations were exactly the same as they would have been for a normal week of school. Um, bare bones instruction in class, it's easy to get on a tangent, and tangents are fun, you know, and I love to talk about 10 or 15 different things in a class period, and kids like getting teachers on the tangents, <laughs> but these podcasts, you know, when you really look at it, the instruction you give in a day is like 10 or 12 minutes of actual new material, so that's what these are, this is the absolute bare bones, what do they need to know for that particular lesson, or that particular piece of the unit, um, so it's taking all that extra stuff and getting rid of it because what kids really want is they want to know what do I have to know, how do I do it, and what are you going to expect from me. In class, I still get on tangents all the time because I'm not teaching. I can just sit down and talk with the kids and say, how was your weekend? You know, how's basketball? How's this? How's that? So you can still have your tangents, but it's not in the instruction anymore. Um, follow along notes. This is the biggest part of, of it. I have to, I pre-write all of their notes and they get a note packet and I actually have one. 
So what they get when they come in for a new unit is I hand them a packet, I, I copy it once, and I post it online. So if they lose it, tough luck, print your own. Um, but what it has is that this is the objectives, and I'll talk about this in a few minutes. But all of their notes are follow along, box highlighted. I've used the same format all year, so they know what to expect. So you can feel free to look at that if you want. Pass that around. Um, and kids leave these all over the place all the time. I don't know how they do. But, um, and then the guided practice. So in these notes, there are critical thinking questions that highlight the, the idea that I taught. So I know exactly the practice that they're doing. I give, um, the, in order to get the objective completed, they have to do those questions. And that way, I know that they thought about it. And they can connect between that lesson as it builds onto other stuff. Hey, um, so really, I am, I am taking everything you would do in a normal class and letting every single student work at their own pace. Right. Uh, I think this is, oh, I haven't done that yet. So how do I record it? Well, this is really cheap. I bought my tablet. I use a, uh, Wacom, or Wacom is the biggest, um, is, is the tablet company. They're, they're kind of the ones that produce, or, um, you know, the, the, <coughs> low, the low end functional ones to the high end wireless, you know, art design studio, whatever. I use the lowest one. I bought it for 30,000 won on Craigslist. Um, and uh, let's see, I'm using Camtasia screen recording right now. This one is more expensive. It's like 200 bucks probably, I think. Yeah. Um, I got it from a conference I went to. I did not pay for that out of pocket. Um, ScreenFlow, though, is on your computer, so it does the same thing. Um, and that's... And what? I've not used that one. This is a better program. Yeah, the, the ones on your computer also ScreenFlow, you have to... It's just a trial version. Yeah. So... You're going to have to upgrade, but it's $40. Yeah, or, and, that's, and that's how I started last year. Before I really got into it, when I was playing with ScreenFlow, I paid the 40 bucks out of pocket, and it works fine. There are some things that are hard to do, like it's hard to zoom a little bit funny. You can't add any annotations, or, or um, not annotations, call-outs, so you can't have any extra stuff pop up. With Camtasia, you can. This is like iMovie for screen recording. All right. Nice. Um, and then I use PowerPoints. And those are based directly off the notes for each lesson. Right. So this is a quick 